Welcome to another episode of Trap Talk. We are here today with our guest, Keith Ditto. It's a pleasure to have you. Also, we have our co-host, Richard Marshall Jr. Welcome to the show, everyone. Hello, everybody. Good morning. How are you doing, Ricky? How are you doing, Zach? So it's a good morning. It's a little cold, but you know, we're uh we're excited to to talk with you today and learn a little bit about you. Ricky has some information to kind of intro who Keith is and what kind of impressive record he is he has. Obviously, we've talked about him on the show before uh, in Ricky Marshall's episode. He's a he's one of the greatest shooters in the country right now. Hello everybody. So, let's introduce Keith. Keith's a 11-time All-American captain one time um he's won these oh what would we say around 15 plus uh state uh, championships in kentucky keith's won multiple championships all over the united states uh he's getting to travel a little bit more um since he's just newly retired also congratulations so, yeah. yeah welcome yeah, to the show keith well thank you very much for having me on and uh yes this retirement gig is uh it's pretty good. I can actually get out and got to go to two more shoots last year just because I was retired. What what, yeah. what shoots were those? That was the U.S. Open, and I had to wait till my daughter, the little one, the KK, was done with tennis at the state tournament. So, and then I went to Wisconsin. It was my first time in Wisconsin, and that was that was pretty nice. Yep. Yeah, Wisconsin's always a great shoot uh, yeah. to go to. But I was at the U.S. Well, Open. Actually, Trust me, everyone remembers you going to the U.S. Open. So. You can you can stay home next year if you want. Well, it just it all depends on how she does in the state tournament. I might get there on time. I might be there late. I don't know. Well, I can tell you if Zach has anything to do with it, he he he's Italian, so he does like to send out bribes. So oh, it's yeah, okay. I hear you. Whiskey bottle I, here, whatever we need to do. But. I accept cash, okay? So Keith, um, the listeners really wanted to know. How did you get started and, and, and kind of what got you involved in the game of trap shooting that we love? Well, I remember, you know, years ago, my, well, my dad, he, he, we always hunted. We grew up on the farm. I mean, we hunted everything, doves, quail, rabbit. We had dogs for everything, deer, you know, everything. And, uh, as I got a little older, dad would go to some trap shoots and he goes, you've always had, and always played basketball, baseball, all that stuff, had good eye hand coordination. I remember dad always saying, you got pretty, you got good eye hand coordination. You probably be pretty good at trap shooting. And needless to say, I guess I held up to his expectations. I've done pretty well at trap shooting. You are pretty damn good at trap shooting. I will say that. And, <laughs> and we, we were looking at your averages and we noticed there was a large shift where your average went up about six birds from one year to the next year. And, and I call that getting serious in the game. You know, what was the major shift for you going from just having fun with it to becoming really dedicated and really serious? Well, I think I know about when you're talking about, it's been a lot of years ago. Um, 2002 to 2003. Is that you? Oh, there you go. See, that's, thank God for Ricky with all this uh, technology, because I would never know what anything was. I used to have to call him sometimes, say, "Hey, how many targets I got, and how many how many points I got?" Because I didn't know nothing about anything. Yep. But anyway, getting back to your question, uh, I well, I remember when I was a sub junior, going to junior. I mean, I played all the sports. We would go to you know three or four shoots, and thought that was like a bunch until. You know, I started getting more into the shooting, got up to, I was, I don't know, when I was about 18, I basically quit shooting for a while because I found out what a lot of other things were when you're a teenager, you know? Oh, yeah. So then when I got back, I shot off and on a little bit through the years and then around, I don't know, 2000, 2001, I thought, well, I'm going to start back shooting again. And in 2002, I went to the Grand. My oldest daughter, Madeline, was born. She was probably six months old. And I broke 100 on the handicap that day, on the Grand American Handicap. I called home and told my wife at the time, Whitney. And she said, no way, you didn't break 100. I said, yes, I did. And from that point on, I started looking at, you know, how do you make the really, I really don't really know nothing about all state teams or all American teams or points or anything. I, I think over the years, I actually talked to Ricky about, you know, what do you really do to, get to the point system or things like that. 
So after 2002, I was like, well, hell, I broke a hundred handicap. I ought to be able to do, and I was shooting old Super X then, Model 1. Yep. And I started out with the Model 12, graduated to the, you know, the MX 2000 Prizy. Um, I just thought, well, you know, I'm going to, I shoot singles pretty good. So I thought, well, I'm going to try to beat Pete the next couple of years, Pete McCall, in the singles. So I started, you know, just one step at a time. And so I started I think it took me like two years to reach that goal. I finally beat him on the average in singles. And then as the years kept going, I got to where I was making the all, all well, the, I've made the all state team since 2002 or three or four. And then I thought, well, I'm going to try the all American team. Didn't have no clue, you know, the points wise, how it really worked. Still, Ricky's the, the, the man on that. I still really don't know how it works. I can get close to it, but. <laughs> I just do the shooting thought. Yeah, I just go shoot. So I thought, okay, I'll start shooting. And I could, at that time, I could only go to about five shoots a year is all I could go to. You know, one of them was the Graham. Of course, that's a big one. And I just, you know, I had, I was still working at the time. All them, the year only, all those years I, I was working. So I didn't have all the vacation. And my oldest daughter played basketball, softball, and my youngest one was doing gymnastics and tennis so whenever i wasn't going to a shoot i was going and watching their ball game so i could only go to five shoots a year maybe six and i was like well hell i'm you know making first team all american you know seventh eighth ninth or tenth you know not up at the top and then the first year that COVID hit the softball and basketball games you know they postponed everything you couldn't play so the first year that i made captain I actually got seven full shoots in. And then, you know, the next year, I think I had eight. And then this year, I think I had nine shoots maybe this year. So, you know, it just kind of set some goals as I was going, like from 2000, when I broke the 100 at the Grand, in 2002, just set some goals to push myself, you know, to try to, you know, try to beat Pete McCall in just the singles. Well, that finally happened. And... I just, you know, if I'm going to pay for a target, I kind of thought, well, hell, if I'm going to pay for them, I'm going to try to break everything I can break, you know, because I'm kind of tight, so. <laughs> well, Keith, and, and looking at your your averages, you, from, like I said, 2003 till now, you've had a 99-plus singles average every year, which is very impressive. Yeah, um, I really didn't even know that. Till you, I think maybe you said something like a couple years ago. You've got like yeah. 17 or 18 years running. And I was like, I do? I was like, yeah. yeah, and it, it looks like 99.79 was your highest average. Yes. And you had a, a 99.74, and then you've yeah. had six of them with a 99.60 to a 99.69 in there in those years, too, which is very impressive, um, well, you know. Well, thank you. I'm glad you're keeping up with all that technology because I didn't know any of this stuff. You you can look this stuff up on on shootata.com, which is which is a nice deal. So you can look and you know, I I always say, you know, when the ATA will start paying me for an average, then I'll really start worrying about it. I just go Oh and my shoot. god. We'd be in real trouble then. Exactly. Well, yeah. Well <laughs> whatever. No, but, I, I don't yeah. know, Keith. I'd still take you over him in singles. I think you got a got a couple more strokes there, but 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 so Keith, with these high numbers, I mean these numbers, they're hard to compute for some of our listeners. I mean, 997, I mean, come on, you're you're running way more hundreds than you're running 99s, and you're never really shooting a 98 because I mean, if you do, it shoots it down. So how did, yeah. you, how, how what did you do to either mentally get to that space or physically get to that space from a training regimen? I mean, was your because it sounds like you were a working guy who barely got to shoot, you know, as much as somebody that shoots full time. Right. So, so how yeah. do you, how do you stay tip top at those five shoots that you go to and make the best out of each one of them when other guys are going to 10 shoots or 15 shoots a year and they're always shooting all the time, you know, walk us through that if you could. Yeah, I know that's kind of my downfall. I knew that, you know, Ricky them go to a, a lot of shoots and, you know, I knew if I was going to only five or six, I had to be, I had to get 200, 250 points at each shoot. And I just, you know, just pushed myself to, if I missed one target, no matter, I mean, I, 
me and Ricky both one year at the at the at the Grand we uh, championship singles. I remember me and him both talking about it. Well, how'd you do today? One ninety nine. I said, which one'd you miss? He goes, first one out. I said, I did the same thing, missed the first one out, and we run one hundred ninety nine straight after that. So I mean, you can't get mad when you miss one. You've got to folks. You got to tell yourself, I'm gonna break everything else that comes out of the house. I mean, you have to. You have to mentally prepare for the target to to come out. And physically, I mean, I mean, you know it, and Ricky knows it too. I run every other day and work out the other days to stay in pretty good shape. Yeah, you're one of the more athletic trap shooters. Uh, I don't know if me and Ricky are on that program yet, but I've been told that before. Yeah, <laughs> I'm on that so program, Zach. Shooter, I so you don't. They tell me I don't look like a trap shooter. <laughs> I, t I told him, Zach, I'll run, I'll I'll go along with him on his runs in my side by side next to him. <laughs> yeah, the golf. Cart. Yeah, we were supposed to do that. We never did do that yet. <laughs> no, we were going to video. So, would you attribute your your working out to your higher level of success in those long runs? And is it more a physical thing for you or more a mental thing? I think if you were gonna say which one was the most, it's probably mental. Because okay. if you're not mentally prepared when you go out there to shoot, you know, you're you're like you say, you you'll miss a couple out of the first couple of targets and then you kind of get dialed in. And that, yeah. that kind of makes sense because Ricky done that a lot this year, not poking fun at him. But I remember we'd be at a couple of shoots on handicap single, whatever, and he'd miss one or two out of the first box and then not miss anything again. You know, he'd like miss two or three on the first box and run the next 75 on handicap. And that takes yeah. mental preparation. Now, on that mental prep, did you read books for that? Or is that something that you just kind of worked on your own between when you started and now just shooting your whole life and just it came to you naturally? Yeah, uh, well, naturally, and I don't mean to be bragging or anything, but I've always had good eye-hand coordination. Played baseball, basketball. I mean, the, my last two years of a senior in high school, I shot 56 and 53% from the field when I was a guard. Wow. And up in the high 80s on free throws. So, you know, it's, it's just I've always had pretty good eye-hand coordination. But I do remember – I don't know if y'all remember Mike Seitz that used yes. to be alive. That he, me and him were, were buddies, and one day he gave me a piece of paper, and he, it, it was an article. I was like, "Oh man, you want me to read?" I said, "This about like me getting on a computer." You gotta be kidding me! <laughs> but I read the article. It was it talked about soft focus and hard focus, and and I read that article, and it it, it hit base with me. I'm like, "Well, heck, I'm doing that now," but I didn't understand what it was, you know, until I read the article of, you know, getting your eyes, don't be checker barrel check, get your, your eyes away from the barrel and soft focus out away from the trap and just lock on the target, try to slow the target down and take your, you know, if you lock on the target, your hands are going to go to the, to the target. You're good. It's going to take the gun to it. It if just makes it. What's Ricky doing? Running around everywhere or what? We can't control him. He goes rubber mode. But yeah. But to speak on that, what you just said was a huge mouthful. And I'm sure a lot of listeners probably have never heard about soft focus, hard focus. Yeah. To dial yes. in on that a little bit more, you know, how would you explain it to someone that's never heard of it? With soft focus to hard focus, uh, if you're riding down the road and you look out the window, and the trees are going by 500 mile an hour, and you're like, holy shit, there's a deer. You see the deer, and you lock on it, and, you, and it just slows down. Every the, that You don't see nothing else but that deer, and it, it just slows down. Got it's it. the same with the trap shooting. You, you get your soft focus out there, away from the trap, and you're kind of, you know, you're just staring at that soft focus point. Holler, pull, don't move. Let your eyes lock on the target, and hopefully – when you lock on the target, your hands and gun go right to the target. So looking for movement, looking wider, looking more open and yes. soft. Nice, and, and, as and, nice and relaxed and, and just like like the like a large hula hoop, if you will, or even bigger than yep. that. Yeah. And, the, and then, and yes, then, it's and, just and, and then from there, just seeing it and grabbing your eyes to it as, as hard as possible. Yes, when you lock on it, and I know you all know what I'm talking about, you see there could be trees or whatever, but when you lock on that target hard, you don't see nothing else but that target, and your hands take the gun right to the target. I mean, it's your, your right-hand target, your left hand don't even feel like you move the gun when you do it correctly. Yep. 
Exactly. Exactly. Now, Keith, where's your whole points in relation to the house? Yeah, I think me and you shoot a lot alike. I am down when I'm shooting singles. My gun is probably in the middle of the top of the trap house. And on handicap, I'm at the back. I'm down a little, little bit more on handicap. I don't do anything different on handicap except I drop my whole point down a little bit on the trap house, and mm -hmm. I shoot. You know, I shoot a bigger bullet, super handicap. So now, what about doubles? Doubles. It kind of depends on where I'm at. If they're lower, I usually hold like at the very top of the trap house, out front. Mm -hmm. I, I'm still never above the trap house hardly at all. And I do the same thing on the doubles as I do singles and handicap on that first target. I holler pull and try to lock on it and then take my eyes as quick to that second one and lock onto it. Yeah. But uh, you're the doubles expert. I'm still trying to, uh, uh, if trying I get my doubles, if I get my doubles up to you, I would be, you know, that would be impressive. Well, we did, you know, I don't know how many years ago that was that I was teaching down at uh, uh, Indian Creek at uh, yep, Wanda and Jason's. Yep. Yeah, and uh, I helped you a little bit with doubles. Um, yeah, I remember I, I called you one day, yep. it's been two or three years ago, and I called Trey Wilburn the same day, and Ty said, man, I am just, of course, it's wintertime, everything, nothing fits right in the winter, you you, you know, you think yep. you need to change yeah. stuff, but I never changed nothing. And I talked to Trey and you both, and you both basically told me the same thing. You know, you're just, you know, you're shooting too quick on the first one, and you're not seeing the second one good you just the trigger thinking that you're there you're shooting at a streak yep and i thought well hell that's and he and you actually both of you told me you're probably holding your gun too high so i dropped my gun down a little bit and you know it's worked pretty well the last two or three years yeah because I, I know it, at indian creek when i was teaching there um that year i come down and did the the lesson you come over and shot the yep. one day and yep. i went over yep. and watched you and helped you that one day and and uh you were you were up higher on the house, and I said, Keith, yes. you're down for everything else. You might as well use the same hole point. That way there's no mental block there of, okay, I got to change here. And that's what a lot of shooters don't understand is yeah. when you start adjusting hole points, singles, handicap, doubles, I believe it, it becomes a mental deal, and it's all subconscious that just you don't realize it, but all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm up here in kind of no man's land, and Oh, 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 and you you tend to flinch or stab oh, a yeah. target and such. So yeah, you get the gun too high, your damn your your gun barrel gets in the way of the target, and you're mm -hmm. wanting to peek the head up to to, to find it. For me, I when I I've got to keep my gun down and my head out away from the so, so you're from always, the gun barrel or the bead. You don't want to be always beat closing you. distance to a target. It's on top of your gun, and you're coming into it with 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 heat at that point until your brain says, "Hey, it's time to shoot that thing." Yeah, you're you you like it's time to pull the trigger. You might not be locked on it yet because you're you you know looked at the barrel or you had your gun too high. But when I started bringing my gun back down, it helped tremendously. Now I know you said the middle of the house. Yes, I've I've heard you tell me before that you hold in the same spot whether it's post one, post two, post three, post four, post five. Can you kind of share your rationale with that, with the listeners, and 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 why do you think it works better for you? Yes, when I'm on, of course, I always like to start on four, and on four, I still have my gun in the middle of the house, but you know, I might be, well, on you the know, corner. I, it'll be in the middle, but I'll be down low in, in the trap. And yeah. then when I get to five, I'm the same way. I'm in the, I make sure the beads are lined up to the middle, but I'm still down like in the back of the corner. You're, you're the holding house. for the straightaway, if you will, on post five. Yes. Or close to it. Yeah. So Cause always... I get my eyes straight out over the barrel. And when I holler, well, most of the time I try not to, when you, when you start anticipating a target, that's when you get in trouble. I try, when I holler, my eyes are straight out over the barrel. I find my soft focus that I want out there. And I holler pull, and I never take my eyes off of that spot until the target comes out, hopefully, when you're doing it right. Now, how, how yeah. far above the house are you then with your eyes, with your soft focus? Oh. Are you up there quite a bit? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, if the tar it, it kind of depends. If the targets are really, really low, my eyes will be down. A my gun will be lowered, and my eyes will be 
lower. If they're higher, oh. I might raise the gun just a touch and might take my eyes out further. Okay. Uh, I'm kind of, we shoot at Ohio a lot. Yep, yep. Uh, the Cardinal Center. So this year, the first day, I was like, man, something ain't right. I don't know what I'm doing. I was looking kind of at the grass. When uh, I took my eyes to the bottom of the curtain. I went yep. out further. And man, okay. it was just like, okay, there we go. There's my, there's my, there's my spot. You so know, sometimes it takes a little the, while. Depending so on I'm the day, at, you're going to change that. Do what now? Depending on the day, you're going to change how high and low it is based on light and background. Uh, only time I usually change is if it's really, if the targets are really high or really low. Other than that, when I go up there, I usually put my gun in basically the same spot every time. And then my eyes yes. are, if the targets are 10 foot higher, my gun might come up a little bit on the house, but my eyes will be further out. That way I'm not shooting at a streak. I'm giving the target a little bit of time to get out so that I can lock on it good. When I, when I shoot, get my eyes too close to the trap and my barrel, it's like, pull, boom, you just see a streak and you pull the trigger. And I know we've all done that. So I try oh, yeah. to get my eyes a little further so I get my eyes <laughs> time to see the target at, at the peak. Yeah, I mean, you shoot very well on a variation of different targets because I know you go to Ohio, you go to MTA, you go to a lot of places around the country, and some places throw them a little bit higher, some places throw them lower, but – I don't ever really see you have difficulty with them, whether they're high or low. It you know you got that really solid fundamental trigger control where you're just going off when you get there, and that's um, yeah. seems to be a similarity between the other top shooters that we've interviewed so far. Is that that trigger control to know okay I'm in the target it's time to shoot you know what's that look like. Is, is, is that something that, that again, comes natural to you based on your hand-eye coordination that you were born with? Or is that something that you had to practice on over the years also? Well, I think it, a lot of it is the eye-hand coordination. But then a lot of it is I, the last four or five years when, like, my handicap average has got a little bit better and my doubles have got a little better, I've taken, like, a half a second longer to get my eyes prepared for the target to come out. Instead of just throwing the gun up hard and pull, I, you know, I, it's, I don't know, quarter second, half a second longer. When I get my gun mounted, look at my soft focus point, I make sure my eyes are prepared for the target to come out. If they're not prepared, then I'm seeing a streak and I'm, it, it like scares me. I'm like, oh my God, you know, I think I got to jump and, and poke at the target instead of just going nice and smooth to the target. Does that make sense? Yes. Am I explaining it halfway decent? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you're – job. If you don't give your eyes time for – the see, if, if your eyes are not prepared to see the target come out, you're, you're in trouble. So that's why I have actually slowed down a little bit and take a little more time to get my eyes ready for the target to come out. Yes. Now, Keith, I got a question. Um, we haven't really asked any other listeners this, but – or, or um, people on the show – what do you feel has helped your game go to the next level? Is it maybe people you've shot with? Because I know you shoot a lot with, with Trey Wilburn. Yes. And I know Trey, you know, um, he's very soft-spoken. Okay, I'm lying. <laughs> I was going to say, wait a minute, you're talking about a different Trey than I know, right? No, Trey, Trey's a great guy, and, and we'll he probably is. have him on the show. Um you know, I've shot a lot with Trey myself. Um, he pushes you. Um, yes, you know, Trey's a, a, a heck of a double shooter. Competitive, um, yes. Competitive guy. You know, so, yes. So Very competitive. Does that, I mean, does that help you, you think, uh, shooting with the same people? Or what's your thought process on that? Well, you are absolutely correct on people pushing you. If you don't, I like to shoot with, you know, really competitive people because yep. when I walk out there with the squads that I shoot with, I know if I beat them, I've got a chance of winning the whole thing. So 
uh, you know, me and Trey shoot a lot together when he goes to these shoots and uh, it's, it pushes you. If you, you know, if you miss one, even when we meet up at Georgetown or somewhere to practice, we'll shoot doubles and man, we are just, you know, we're, we're focused. I mean, it's, if we miss one, we're like, God darn, he's going to beat my ass. I can't, I can't, I cannot <laughs> miss anymore. I mean, it, it pushed, when you shoot with better people, it makes you better. And when, Absolutely. I, and when I go practice, I mean, I go to Georgetown, I probably shoot more targets practicing at Georgetown, Indiana, Indian Creek with Jason and Wanda and them than what I do rest your shoot targets through the year. Yeah. And I'll, and when I step out there to shoot, it's not fun and games. It's not, hey, buddy, what are you doing over there throwing this hill? You know, it's, I'm shooting them just like I'm standing there at the Grand American, whether I shoot 50 singles, 50 handicap, 100 double, whatever. I'm shooting them all just like I'm standing there at the Grand trying to break every target that they throw out of the house to get that muscle memory. Mm -hmm. you got to have that muscle memory. If you're just, if you shoot, you know, two or 300 targets this week and then don't shoot again for three weeks, it takes you a little while to get back in the groove. It just takes a while. So I try to just keep shooting all year long, whether it's a little bit or a lot. And when March or April gets here, I'll start shooting four or 500 target, target practices over there until we start seeing each other at all the shoots. So that was a mouthful you just said there, because I don't think anyone that we've interviewed said that about their practice schedule anymore. You know, I, I know for me, yeah. A lot of the times I'm going to tournaments and I'm using those preliminary yes. days to get into the target. And then hopefully by yep. the overall, I'm ready. But from work to shooting, I'm not doing a whole lot of practice. And you said that you shoot as much or more practice than you do registered targets in a year. The other thing yes. that I really picked up on for you, you're trying to actually break the target instead of, working on well maybe i need to try a different hold point today or maybe i need to try a different technique today you're ingraining the same thing over and over again because you've already proven that it works instead of i think some practice yes people go out and they're like i want to try new things i want to adjust my gun or i want to try a different hold point today and 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 i'm i'm, I'm guessing from your experience yeah that's probably not a good use of your practice no I'm never, once I got my gun set, it's never been changed. I never change anything. And when I walk out there to practice, why would you, I mean, don't take this the wrong way, but why would I want to change anything with the way I've been shooting the last 10, 12 years of or course. 15 or whatever? Because I don't know. Why would you, why would you try a different hold point, miss three or four targets or try, you know, I just, if it's working, I'm keeping it and that's what I'm going to do. I like that. Yeah. Keep it, keep it yeah. consistent and simple. Now yeah. I know, I know you probably want to share with the listeners what gun you're shooting, your setup, you know, your, your stock and kind of all of that side of it. Uh, you know, what, what point of impact are you shooting right now and kind of walk us Oh my Lord. Setup. I know you're going to ask that. <laughs> uh, well, I shoot an MX 2000 Parazzi and the other parts I have no idea. And Vernon Brown laughed at me when we set that precision fit, stock up of course he has sold his business to bob schultz target shotguns incorporated and pfs yeah he said he wanted to know what is your hold points where did what is your, how high is your gun shoot i said i have no idea i put the gun up and i lock on the target and take the gun to it and eat balls out it and shoots it he shoots. couldn't believe it he laughed at, he laughed at me for 30 minutes and he finally set my precision fit up just like my other stock <clears> and i tweaked it once or twice and i haven't changed it in well however long i've had it it's been set the same way but yeah a point of impact i mean it's i mean i can if you've got a target and you put the bead at the target most of the shot is half of the target up there's just a very little bit so you're, half you're, down. you're probably in the eight seventy thirty eighty twenty range okay we'll just say yeah, quit laughing at me because i don't know that's no the i'm the, the hey Keith, yeah. I, I was the same way when I, I had a gun stolen years ago. Yeah. Uh, I sent the new gun I had to Tommy Wilkinson, yeah. and he said, where do you want it to shoot? And I'm like, well, everybody's shooting 100%. I guess that's where I want it. He said, yeah. let's start about 75, 25, and we'll yeah. go from there. He sent it back. I walked out. I said, Dad, this is exactly where it was. And he goes, well, where was the other one? I said, I guess where he had it. <laughs> so, yeah, I know, because – 
I started with the model 12. You could yeah. just nothing. You just, you know, you shot it. And, and then I went to the super X model one. There's nothing I could do with it. Just shoot it. But I shot them well. Yeah. And yeah. I always fit myself to the gun. I've never had uh, still to the day. I've never really had a gun fit to me. You know, I've just, the precision fit is set like the old MX. Yeah. Was, it, so. and like I, like I it always works, say, so. yeah, if it works, you know, don't fix it. You, you shoot the PFS good. You know, Bob Schultz owns the company now, Yes. Uh, you know, with Target Shotguns. Bob is a, a longtime friend, family friend. Uh, he's actually yes. known my wife longer than I think I've known Bob. Uh, <laughs> you know, great guy. Uh, does, a great lot, guy. does a yes. lot for the sport of shooting. Oh, yeah. Um, he's got, yeah, he, he's like a one-stop shop now. You can get everything yep. there. Yes. Yeah, he does the hot dog cookout, I think, still at Missouri. Yes, um, yeah, he does. You know, he's done some stuff, I think, up in Wisconsin State shoot, too. Yes, he um, did. He put on, uh, uh, yeah, uh, one know. of the foods for that night, yes. Yeah, so, but one thing I'd like I'd like to go back on, Zach, was when Keith was talking about his practice, so our listeners understand, because I was the same way. I, I practiced a lot growing up, um, and I still practice to this day, but I do a lot more on the sporting clay side. Yes. Um, and I shoot some, too. I shoot all the games, of course, now. Keith, I know you shoot a lot with Trey, and since you know you practice there at Georgetown uh, with with Jason Seitz's club there in Wanda, and it's a great facility for everybody. Needs to stop and see that club. Um, oh, it's definitely. kind of a one stop shop of, and he's yeah, got, got sporting, sport, yeah, sporting, ski, five stand yep. now, and Trey. Yep. So. so now has Trey got you converted over to shoot any any sporting with him or or what? Not yet, but I told him this winter. You know, when we get a, like a warmer day, we'll shoot some five stand or some sporting clay. Now, I've shot some sporting clays there before in the in the in the years past, and I don't know, broke 78, 84, 87 on the sporting clay track. Yeah, you know, thing. But it is fun because you shoot a lot of different other stuff. Yep. But, yep. I'm finally getting the Nini com- converted over to shoot some more sporting and I'm trying and stuff. My best. It's a great game. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Ricky can shoot anything. It don't matter. He shoots. He shoot everything good. I know. You just got to have fun, you know. Oh yeah, definitely. You got to have. You got to have fun at it. And I mean, and you talking about having fun? I mean, it's it is fun to go to these shoots. And when I was working, everybody was like, "Oh, you're on vacation." You know, you're gonna. It was more work shooting than it is (laughs) vacation. I mean, it is. It ain't a vacation. I mean, I'm off of work, but man, you get up in the morning and you shoot 300 targets, and you get home, go eat. And and just go to bed in a hotel or, or in a camper, Joe got. You know, it's an all day process. It is mentally and physically grinding. And oh, I yeah. before I started going to a few more shoots after I retired, like seven, nine, maybe ten. I don't know how you all I got a new respect for all of you all, Harlan Leo, everybody that goes to, I don't know, 12, 15, 20 shoots a year. That I mean, Jesus Christ, I don't know how y'all do it it is it's got to be mentally exhausting sometimes it, it it can be as you know now uh on a different note you've got yes. a couple daughters madeline yes. and caitlin yes and I do. i've known them since they were little little babies oh yeah uh, you know so what uh i know what caitlin's a senior this year correct yes yes and she plays tennis yeah, yeah. Now, how is that going to affect uh, when graduation is to your shooting? Well, if <laughs> you know, if she's graduating, I'm going to be there. You know, <laughs> yeah. That, that, it shouldn't have it shouldn't affect anything, but you know, if I ain't at a shoot and it's close to like sometime in graduation, that's where I'm going to be. Be, yeah. be. It's just like when I was going to five or six shoots a year. And most of the time, I would do them. You know, yep. the main five or six shoots, and then I was you know, going to all of, all of their ball. I never hardly, I missed some games, but not very many. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, you know, it's family. The, the, the kids come first, you know that. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, it is. And I never, it, it was fun watching them grow up playing the basketball, the softball, the gymnastics, the tennis. It's, it is, it's awesome. Now, so, how is, now what grades Madeline in? She's a junior or sophomore? She, she is, she is. She did. She went through the program and had her associates, just like KK's doing, when she graduated high school. Okay. So she went, 
She went two years. She's graduating next Friday, December 9th, with her bachelor's from Western Kentucky. Oh, okay. Yep. And then she's doing physical therapy, so she's trying to get into a doctoring program. So okay. she's got interviews at other schools like Kentucky, Western, Betterland, all of them places, trying to get into that. The, well, it used to be master. I think it's a doctorate now yeah. for another three years, you know, so. Now, how do they feel about your your success in, in, in the shooting world? Uh, you know, how do they do they know that you're going to be on a podcast, by the way? I think I told them they're like, Dad, you don't have a computer. I said, well, y'all might have to help me with that. Because <laughs> uh, uh, they were laughing. They're like, Dad, we always got to do everything on, the, on, the, on your phone for you. We got to show you how to. They Over the years, they finally showed me how to, you know, punch in maps where I can get somewhere nice on the phone. <laughs> I'm like, hey, that's pretty cool now. So, yeah, they kind of make fun of me. So, but anyway, yeah, I thought I was going to have to get their laptops and stuff and go over there. But my buddy Kurt lives five minutes from me. He said, well, hell, come over here. I do this all the time. I was like, man, yeah. that's awesome. Thank God for so, now we're 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 grooming you, Keith. Yeah, I'm not very good at the technology stuff. I used to, like I said, I used to call Ricky. I used to call Jackie Stellenberger, Chrissy Bird, and Lauren Mueller, and say, "Hey, how many targets I got? Do I need some?" When I was only getting five or six shoots, I would, you know, I had to shoot a bunch at Georgetown to get the targets that I needed to make the All American team. So I'd call them. They were like, "Oh yeah, you're calling me because you need uh, what do you need. You need your points, or you need your how many targets you got." I'm like, "Yeah, you're on it," because I don't know how to do it. But now. I'm getting better. I can I can actually look up and see how many points and targets I have. Well, that unless I need to call Ricky when we're you know, uh, what was it two last not last year the year before? Yeah, we both had a great grand. Yep. And I was like, well, I don't know we're close. I have no idea, you know, how close we were. And Ricky said he called me like two days later before I was headed up to Ohio, and he said we are 14 points away from each other. Of course, he had the lead. Imagine that, and. Uh, he come out on top. He kicked my butt. Yeah, you had but, to go uh, though. You, you didn't yeah. lay down. I like that. Yeah, we had, well, a, we I, had a good I time. To go to, me and him both were like wanting to go to Ohio that year. Just kind of like, okay, we'll shoot a couple <laughs> handicaps here, a couple targets here, and then we were fourteen points away from each other. We were like, but dang, I guess we got to shoot the whole thing now. Yeah, because it's a mental grind, man. Shoot twenty six hundred targets at the at the Grand, and go the next week to the Cardinal Classic. It is, whew, it's mentally tough. No, I, I mentally I, tough. That's that's one of the the hardest feats to accomplish is to shoot the high score at the twenty six hundred. I know you've yeah. done it, Keith, and I know Ricky just did it last year. Um, you know that's that it's it's a mental grind. Um, you know that being said, Ricky, is there any other questions that you have today for Keith? Is there? No one one quick question is Keith. What do you think? What is your goals for this year? Of course, I know what one of your goals is. Is, is mine is every year, but is are you going to try to down? Get, well, that's, are you going to try to get to some new shoots that you haven't been to? Are you are you just going to try to continue with the the same shoots you go to? Well, I'll I will continue with the same ones I went to last year. Yep, and I'm thinking about throwing Iowa in there. There you go. But man, Lord, that's like 10, 11 hours. I mean, you know, shoot, oh, okay. that's getting out there. That's pretty fun. You know. Hey, I did go to, but I think, it, and you all might know. Of course, you got the Illinois State shoot, Ohio State shoot, then you got Kentucky, and then is Wisconsin after Kentucky this year? Uh, then Indiana, Wisconsin. Indiana. Well, Wisconsin will be the same time as it was last year, so it should go. Uh, should go Kentucky then because Indiana is before Kentucky, right? Yeah, usually it was Kentucky, Indiana, but somehow or another, we was at Missouri and Michael Gooch had it on his phone. It looked like it was going to be Kentucky, Wisconsin, then Indiana. Well, I, I haven't looked at it, I'm not for sure. Wisconsin, but. Wisconsin is always the week before Iowa, so it'll go Wisconsin, Iowa. So, and when okay. Iowa, Wisconsin, Wisconsin is a great place to come shoot. For all our listeners that haven't been up there to Wisconsin, Keith can attest to this. He came up last year. Great club, great people. They put on a fish fry. Um, hey, they had a hog roast too. That was awesome. Yeah, they did. Yep, Woo! yep. I yeah. mean, and, you know, it's just a – it's a great shoot. Zach just seems to not want to come. I don't know why, but, you know. Man, maybe because me and you are there probably. I could know. be. I, I can't <laughs> afford the cheese bill up there. <laughs> Hey, and that was one thing. Every before we stopped getting gas or anything, we got in Wisconsin, it was something with cheese everywhere. I was like, holy crap. Yeah. Well, 
Well, Keith, no. is there is there any sponsors that you'd like to thank or anyone that you'd like to, to say a few words to before we get out of here today? Oh, yes. I want to thank Winchester Ammunition. Of course, you can tell in the background there. I got my big rug up. I, I didn't um, notice. <laughs> I thought maybe Ricky might, you know, want to want to see that a little bit, you know, the Winchester there. So, uh, yeah, Winchester, I want to thank, you know, Donnie and Nathan there. They take really good care of me. Uh, there is Precision Fit Stocks and Target Shotguns Incorporated with Bob Schultz. If y'all need anything, give them a holler. Uh, Parazi, Al, uh, they take very good care of me. And then uh, Elite Shotguns, Aaron Willoughby. Uh, and then there's George, the Georgetown, Indiana, Indian Creek. Come down and then uh, check us out at uh, Jason and Wanda Sykes's. They got everything, sporting clays, uh, five stand, traps, keeked. Uh, believe that if I missed anybody, can you? I think you got them. White Flyer is not a White Flyer is not a sponsor, but I'll give White Flyer a, a punch out there if they, uh, you know, they can always give me a holler if they want somebody else uh, to help keep Ricky in check or something, you know, sponsor. <laughs> hey, White Flyer is a great product. Well, Keith, it's, 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 yeah. We, oh yes, definitely. We love shooting them for sure. Well, you know, it's been a great episode today, Keith. We really appreciate having you on. I'm sure we'd love to have you on again because you're a wealth of knowledge to the sport. We'd like to thank our show sponsors, obviously, Remington and Winnick Stock Works. And we look forward to talking to you again. So thank you very much for being here today. Well, thank you very much. And I do want, I just got one more thing. I want to, uh, if, I don't know if my mom and dad ever listened to this, but I want to thank them. If it wasn't for my mom and dad, I wouldn't be sitting here today. And they have, uh, uh, if it wasn't for them, you know, we wouldn't be out there trap shooting. That's so I want to thank you all very much. Thank you, Zach. Thank you, Ricky. And both of y'all have uh, great years this year, I hope. Yeah, we'll, you we'll, too, we'll, Keith. We appreciate it. We'll see you at the next shoot, Keith. Have a fabulous day. Hey, you too. Thank you all. Bye-bye.